Hello everyone, welcome back to Instant Release and uh, today we're going to talk about sensors and more specifically sensor technology. We're going to compare CMOS sensors with uh, CCD sensors. Now, uh, you can't, I, I talked about this in the D300 rev uh, review video I made about a month ago, it's, it's been a while, um, but you can't really compare uh, any CMOS sensors to any CCD sensor because then you will have problems with you know what the color science is what the brand was going for so I can't compare my Fujifilm uh, CMOS sensors to my uh, CCD in my Nikon uh, so the CCD sensor that we are using is the only CCD sensor I have which would make sense to compare. I have another one in D1X, but the D1X is like a very special sensor. I can't really compare that to anything. And so I am comparing, we are taking a point of, compa of comparison today, which is the D60, which is this dude right here. Okay. Uh, if it's, uh, if the video is noisy, by the way, I'm not talking about the noise, like the sound, but the image, uh, it's because uh, it's winter time and um, almost winter time. We were like went to the uh, a winter hour, so uh, it's dark earlier, and um, uh, yeah, I don't have my window to have a, like a good light source. So anyway, so we're using D60 as a point of comparison today, and I'm comparing the D60 to the D300, which is this little bad boy here. Uh, the D300, um, the reasons basically why I'm comparing the D60 to the D300 is because of the sensor. Uh, the sensor makes sense to compare to the D60 because it's a similar resolution, same uh, format. It was released about the same time it's, and it's the same brand. So basically that's the gist of it. Uh, if you want more details, I explain more in more detail why I got the D300 specifically. Uh, in the D300 video, so go check that out. <laughs> okay, so um, now for the testing methods, uh, I think it's uh, it's pretty important to talk about that. Uh, the, it's not going to be a very long process uh, to walk you through it. Uh, basically, when it comes to color science and stuff like that, I basically took my tripod, took the same lens, I think I tested everything with the 35mm f1.8 DX, uh, this one, which is like the the nifty the nifty 54 APS-C cameras uh, for Nikon, um, and uh, I took my tripod, set my tripod for some shots, and I did the exact same shots on the two cameras with the same lenses, same settings, same wire balance, same everything when it comes to, so that way we have like right out of, right out of camera, no processing whatsoever generally. And except when I just like wanted to, to bring the highlights down or something like that, but uh, no color processing whatsoever on those, on the files that you're going to see. And I just wanted to have like the raw output of both of those cameras at the same wire balance, same exposure time, same ISO, and basically it's the same exact picture on both cameras. And then for the dynamic range test, uh, dynamic range is more like noise test actually, don't have like a dynamic range machine that I could use to test those cameras. But uh, for the noise test, uh, what I did is I took ex just like for the color test, but this time on a static scene, uh, I took the same shot at every ISO value on each camera and uh, I underexposed every shot by two stops and then when I put that into Capture One, I like exposed by two stops over what the photo had. So it's basically an exposure of like zero, like 18% gray average, okay. And uh, there was like pretty strong highlights. So I did minus 100 on the highlight slider on all images on both cameras. Okay, so now that the testing method is out of the way, uh, let's talk about the results. And the results are pretty easy to understand, I think. Uh, when it comes to colors, what I saw, I, I, I was planning to do I was planning on doing a, a more in-depth uh, review of each color, what was the processing on each camera, and it's not really worth it because the conclusion was the, was the exact same each time. 
basically because I'm more muted and more vintage looking on the D60. Uh, pretty much like the greens especially are a bit darker and deeper but uh, like less saturated compared to the D300 and overall that's that's just my feeling about it but D60 is a lot less accurate when it comes to the actual image that you get out of it uh, compared to the D300 which is a bit more saturated but more accurate to what you're actually seeing in real life and that was something that I so right away, even just looking at the back of the screen of the camera, that's something that you can see already. Uh, so for example, some flowers were like pink in real life, and they were pink in the D300, and they were like more in the purple side on the D60. Just maybe the red was um, much less saturated, but the blue was a bit more, a bit stronger. I don't know. But the color was just different in D60 compared to the D300, and the D300 was much, much, much closer to what it actually was in real life. Okay, um, now there's one outlier in this, and that's the blue. Uh, more specifically, blue when it's uh, mixed with green to go into more into the cyan thing, like generally that's light blue, you know. Uh, and that was with the sky. The D300. True to, true to itself was pretty accurate it was blue like blue sky and that was blue and on the d60 it, there was a greenish tint to the sky and i couldn't really explain it other than it's not like it's not more muted than the d300 it's just a different color altogether it, it's it's not the same thing uh but that's something that you need to know every color is more muted like the reds the browns, the oranges, the yellows, the greens, uh, the purples, the pinks, they are all pretty much muted on, more muted than they're on, on, the, on the D300, on the D60, uh, except the blues, which are not more muted, but on the greenish tint. So that's what I saw. For skin tones, I did not have the occasion to test it on someone, and uh, <laughs> I did not have faith in uh, people of my family to um, operate a camera. Anyway, uh, the thing is that I did not test that for um, skins and stuff like that. But my gut in my gut feeling about this is that since the D60 a lot more muted for the reds and the browns and the oranges and the yellows, I think it would have been the same conclusion for for skin tones. Actually, it would have been a bit more, a bit more muted. Uh, now, this is like the objective facts that I'm presenting to you. Now, now comes the opinion about it. Uh, the D60 has a bit vintage look, a, a bit of a vintage look to it. Not something that I dislike, but I do prefer having a more accurate image when I'm starting to work on a raw file because. If, if I want to have something that is a bit vintage looking and stuff or, or something like that, I want that to be on the JPEG. I do not mind this on the JPEG. That's what I'm, I'm using for different cameras uh, to have like that nice film simulation, vintage looking image on the JPEG. And if I want to do something on the RAW file, I have the RAW file, which is like standard neutral colors. And that's where the D300 is. I can use the picture control profiles and stuff like that in that camera. I can't do that in the D60. And the D60, as I said, uh, has that like pretty muted, like vintage looking uh, color profile on the raw file. Is that's not in the JPEG. So, um, and it's not that it's not in the JPEG, but it's already in, in the raw file. So there's not much difference. Uh, so you're not going off a blank slate if I wanted to, if I put it that way, you know, it's not like something that you work off. It's something that you, it's, it's just something different. Okay. So let's now talk about the noise and the uh, dynamic range thing, uh, to see if there's really a problem using CCD sensors mostly because I mean, the industry has shifted towards CMOS anyway, so. That's one thing. If it has shifted towards the technology, that may be uh, because it's better. <laughs> and it is, actually. So, talking about the ISO ranges on both cameras, uh, the D60 has an ISO range of 100 to 1600 natively and can extend up to 3200. And the D300 can uh, do um, 200 to 3200 and can extend from 100 to 6400. Uh, now, on neither of those cameras, I would advise you to use the extended ISO ranges 
it's the same thing with all with all of my Nikon cameras, the D2H, the D1X, the D700, whatever the performance of that camera is, the moment that you step out of that native ISO range, you get like some weird problems, either with like the noise that just like jumps much, much, much higher than what you would expect it to be, or when you are in the lower side of the ISO and you are uh, you know, going into the low extended ISO range, then you lose dynamic range and you lose exposure, even though you have you know, the exposure compensation that is set to do something. It's just a bit weird. Anyway, when it comes to um, the D300, the, it has basically a stop advantage, meaning that the noise at ISO 1600 on the uh, D60, for example, looks exactly the same as the noise at ISO 3200 on the D300, at least to my eyes. Uh, does that mean that the D300 is better? Uh, yes, it is better, but it's just that the ISO range has been shifted, you know. Uh, the native uh, D60 looks very nice at 100, at ISO 100. While the D300 loses dynamic range at ISO 100, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, if you want to have the best image quality and the best dynamic range with the D with the D300, you need to go at ISO 200. So you are already not like apples to apples comparison here, and it's a bit of a shift, and uh, it's a bit different. Now, if I had to give a winner, of course, it would be the D300 because. It looks better at ISO ranges and so it's more flexible, but otherwise I wouldn't say that D60 is like a really, really big uh, problem when it comes to taking photographs and I don't think that the ISO performance is that bad actually. Uh, so if you want to, to know my opinion about CMOS versus CCD, I personally prefer the performance of CMOS, I personally prefer the color output of CMOS as well and uh, when it comes to functionality there is no question the camera shoots faster and it has live view and uh, down the road it could have video and stuff like that so the, the 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 switch to CMOS definitely brought things that are better that like beyond the performance or the colors it like brought like actual features like live view and uh, on a D60, it's quite limiting not to have live view, for example, and because the viewfinder, it's, it's cramped, it's not that great. Uh, so, yeah, there is all of these things that are making me tend more, a bit more towards the CMOS side of things than CCD, but CCD images are still nice. And I wouldn't say that CCD images are bad, but I wouldn't say that they are much better either. Uh, I wouldn't say that they are like the magic thing, uh, like I could have read on forums and stuff like that. I don't think that's the case, and I don't think that um, these sensors are inherently better when it comes to color output. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Um, so that's about all I had to say about this topic. Uh, I know it's been a while. I said I would do this video for a long, long time, and I technically didn't um, and it's quite short I know uh, I wanted to do a bit more testing in depth but I quickly realized that these two cameras were like super different and like not the sensor part but everything else around it so comparing them further would be doing a disservice to the D60 I think I would I would have preferred to have a D200 to compare it to D300 but at this point is we're not comparing CMOS versus CD, we are comparing two cameras. So um, yeah, that's the thing. On that note, I think I'm going to shut up for now and uh, work on other videos now. Um, if you want to know more about the D300 or the D60, I have reviews uh, that I've done, detailed reviews I've, I have done on this channel. So I invite you to go see those videos if you are interested by those cameras. And uh, with that being said, I uh, wish you a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. See you guys.